Alrighty, let's get started. Thank you all. Thank you for um, joining the Endpoint Unified Endpoint Management and Security Seminar. Um, before starting, hope am I audible, loud and clear? Would appreciate if you guys can raise your hand or uh, you know um, or update it in the chat. Uh, any questions during the sessions are welcome. Please, there is a, a question uh, tab. Uh, you can update your questions. And there is a chat that's available as well. So please feel free to ask any questions during the session. We have a panel members and organizers, or organizations uh, you know, in the session who can provide the inputs accordingly. Perfect. All right. So. Let's get started. Um, so in this uh, particular uh, seminar, what we are gonna cover is how we can prevent the next wave of cyber attack. So it's pretty much zero day tolerance, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, make sure that we are protected with the known threats that's available in the market. And um, uh, we got the presenter Shanto, she's a global speaker. So he's gonna manage the organization of it. So uh, Santosh, let's move on to the next slide. Perfect. Hope you might, you guys might be already aware of Manage Engine Zoho, it's a global brand. I'll just give a quick blurb about our uh, you know, Manage Engine New Zealand. So, uh, so as you guys know, it's a global brand has three main divisions. Manage Engine has the division for comprehensive IT management solutions, covers like 120, say it says 90, but there's about 120 plus uh, solutions that's available in the market to cater the uh, uh, dynamic needs of uh, for the IT industry. And uh, the best part is uh, our 10 out of nine uh, Fortune uh, 500 companies they are using or relying on manage engine solutions and uh, the solutions spread across uh, to 190 plus countries to highlight in New Zealand alone we have more than 700 plus customers business customers using a manage engine solutions for managing the IT in fact uh, they are also using it for the non IT business functions teams or departments for uh, a specific need uh, where the managed engine solution can best fit and help their requirements. Where we have Zogo, we call that as, uh, you know, it's an operating system uh, for business. So you have all business application solutions out there. And then the web NMS uh, branch where uh, IoT of uh, things like, uh, uh, you know, it's all managed from there. Soft solutions, we've been an exclusive distributor for Manage Engine in New Zealand. And we have a local team here who are available to assist our customer base in New Zealand for a while. And we are 100% channel focused. And, uh, you know, our team is based in Auckland, in New Market. We are always there to assist, meet our customers uh, as and when needed, and we are here to assist. Let's move on to the next slide. Sweet. So I was telling about the comprehensive IT management software for all your business needs, where you guys can see it on the right side, the way uh, Manage Engine tool sets are segmented and categorized. Uh, starts from the IT service management help desk for managing your shared mailbox to a proper ticketing system, managing your service request or your incidents, problem management, change management, project management, release management, you know, you get the whole, uh, you know, service, IT service management managed. Now, we have an enterprise service management, you can also manage that across multiple teams. Then comes closely knitted, integrated with the desktop central, which is a solution for endpoint management and security. What you guys can do is, even from the ticketing system, you guys can manage your, uh, incidents reported from your endpoints and get it addressed. If there is a patch that needs to be updated, can be done to uh, automate your, uh, you know, patching and also updating a software. If there is a request for a particular software update or install or supporting uh, your endpoint, uh, you, uh, your users who are managing the endpoints, then we can get it all done directly from the ticketing system and uh, updating a configuration, um, 
you know, and, and managing your mobile devices. It's all covered with a tight knitted integration with ser uh, service desk press and desktop central. Then the whole aspects of the other uh, segments are IT operation management, where you're monitoring your network device monitoring, your network configuration management, your network uh, net flow analyzer, bandwidth monitoring and utilization, your uh, mission critical server uh, applications monitoring and make sure that you are maintaining a high availability of your uh, business critical application so we have solutions around it and our ad solutions again tightly knitted with our it help desk tool for uh, automating your user onboarding process that includes uh, you know getting from a ticketing system to an ad provisioning plus managing your computers uh, endpoints uh, the necessary software that needed in user automations can be all done together when the uh, tools gets integrated. And then uh, our IT security to make sure that internal and external threats are identified well in advance and mitigated proactively and remediating if there is any such uh, risk identified. And, uh, you know, any anomalies, the detection of anomalies with security uh, risk rating and other parameters that's all comes under IT security where a log 360 or log management or security incident and uh, event management solutions then our cloud uh, solutions so all our management and solutions are available as on-premises tool as well as uh, most of the uh, solutions are available as a SaaS tool like fully hosted by manage engine cloud cluster and we have it in uh, Australia data center. So most of the uh, tools available as a SaaS based solution and most of our on premises solution can be also hosted in your public cloud like AWS or Azure. It's available in the marketplace or even in your private uh, cloud or a government cloud. Yep, so that's a good insight about our solutions and the best part is the way to put these details across. We have the analytic solution. So this is about a unified endpoint management tools where it covers the whole spectrum of endpoint management security where you guys can see it starting from desktop or endpoint management advanced remote control to make sure that you guys shadow a session or uh, get full control uh, assist with unattended access and again uh, ability to remote view even your uh, you know Apple devices with uh, mobile device management or remote control on Android devices and patching. So patching, it's not just a native patching. It's about uh, patching your uh, Windows and non-native uh, third-party applications as well. And it's platform independent. So you have uh, Microsoft, uh, Linux, and Mac across uh, you know platforms we can uh, enable the patching. And then comes our software deployment module and uh, you know, uh, uh, system tools module. Then we have the security management where we cover uh, the whole spectrum of it, like the browser security and the configurations management and browser security as itself. When we have multiple browser managed in an organization where we can do it, where we can uh, have an appropriate IT security policy uh, configured and passed on to all uh, browser versions across and different flavors of the browsers. And vulnerability management, it provides um, the bad configurations, so any bad configurations we have or any sort of vulnerability that we can uh, identify or assist in our environment can be reported and we can remediate with our tool sets. And then application control for whitelisting and blacklisting of your uh, applications that is, um, you know, whitelisting the business production applications and blacklisting any unwanted application to make sure that your productivity is high enough and device management for all your USB device controls to make sure that only the necessary alert device uh, are reported and managed accordingly. Then OS deployment for bulk OS deployment rollouts uh, options. So this is the whole spectrum of our unified endpoint management solution. So let's move on to the next slide that gives an insight about our agenda. So the, under the agenda, we have introduction, which we've already done. Then um, we talked about the endpoint management security, the whole spectrum of the solutions and the modules that's covered. And we are going to get in detail about these from our uh, global international speaker, Santosh. And we have feature updates. He's going to provide the latest what is going on in our product portfolio will be covered by Santosh. And the possible integration available with Desktop Central, that's going to be highlighted as well. 
and then we have our uh, uh, desktop central cloud uh, SaaS based endpoint management how it is what it is what is the limitations or what we can do with our cloud-based endpoint management solutions that's going to be covered in detail as well and then key highlight and difference between on-premises and cloud-based endpoint management solutions so that's going to be highlighted by santosh and then we have a, a you know session that winds up like a question a question and answers or any questions we'll be providing answers accordingly and we will reach out and update it accordingly Let's move on. So a quick introduction about our local team in uh, New Zealand. So where you guys can see, you can see myself uh, I'm the solutions delivery manager, making sure that customer our customer gets the best out of managed engine solutions and the tool sets. So if you guys already a customer, then uh, feel free to reach out. We are always here to help and making sure that you guys get the best product experience and utilizing the product to its fullest potential. And that's my core role. And we have uh, a smiling face Drew uh, on the left side where he takes care of all our customers engagements and he owns the commercials management with the customers, make sure that they are solutions procurement as seamless for our New Zealand customers. And we have uh, Kenny, a sales engineer, being very instrumental in making sure that our customers onboarding process and the solution procurement process is seamless and making sure the coding and uh, uh, demos and further pre-sale activities are taken care of. Let's move on to the next slide. That's where we have our international speaker, Santosh. So he's one of the uh, uh, key member of endpoint management team. Hi, Santosh. Uh, so he been with this team for uh, quite a long time, I guess. So Santosh being a veteran. Uh, and he enabled, assisted a lot of global customers, a uh, lot of big international customers across the globe. So he's going to share his insights. And um, yep, uh, let's move on to the next slide on integrations, and then I'll pass it on to Santosh to take over. Sweet. So what do you guys see right now is about integrations with control and command. Uh, I've already explained about these uh, insights. So where you guys can see service desk, and service desk plus MSP highlighted up here. Having said that, this is acts like a control and command. So uh, what I'm about to say is with the tight integration, you can expand your IT health desk capabilities. So from the request management, you can literally manage your endpoint, uh, desktop, mobiles, servers, uh, management and security aspects of it automating your patch deployment software deployment mobile device management or service portal and uh, making sure the allowed softwares are there in the machine so that's the capability of our integration with control and command using a service desk and other native integrations best part is all our solutions supports a rest api integration as well and third-party integration so irrespective of what solutions you have in-house we can provide a REST API documentation that will enable any of our managed engine solution to integrate with your native applications that you guys are using, even if it's uh, different third-party vendor applications, can still have our application solutions work with your internal tools. And if you guys need any help with that, uh, you know, as a local resource, we are always here to help and we have a global team supporting us and ensuring that, you know, uh, your requirements are taken care of. Much appreciated. Uh, over to you, Santosh. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. And uh, on behalf of Manage Engine team, uh, our sincere thanks to all to all our customers, partners, and users who are currently joining the session. Welcome to the session once again. Uh, my name is Santosh Narasimhamurthy, and I'm technical account manager for Manage Engine and I take care of endpoint management and security line of products. Right, so let's let's go get into the today's presentation. So before I begin, a quick question to all of you. Who led the digital transformation of your company? Uh, uh, there's been a serious question, but uh, the answer for some of the organizations around the world that we find is uh, due to this COVID-19 situation. So who led the digital transformation? Some said it should be CEO, the CEO of the company, but uh, for most of the companies or some of the companies around the globe, we find COVID-19 
led to their digital transformation. They were forced to move into a digital transformation where they can manage their endpoints globally, uh, remote workforce, going to work from home situations, uh, all their digital space, con all their workspace have been upgraded. So that led to a digital transformation globally. Now, when we talk to our customers around around the globe, we we align to a physiology, I mean philosophy, um, which is ABC philosophy, where we we tell our customers to align right tools, right? Go for choose the best tools, choose the right tools that's right for your business, and then you go for the build your process for remote work in this COVID nineteen situation, uh, where moved almost 50% of a workforce into remote work. So build your process for this remote work and get compliant, achieve compliance through the tools, take the tools, achieve compliance, security compliance, so that you don't have any issues with your endpoints. So it's always good to go with the philosophy, ABC philosophy, align with the right tools, build the process for your remote work and even when you come back to office, right? Not just remote work. When you come back to the office, you need a strong process in place so that you achieve your compliance. And uh, this is small data from uh, from from our uh, World Economic Forum. So you can see on the chart a 66% prolonged recession of global economy during this COVID-19. And the third one is what concerns us all the time cyber attacks and data frauds due to sustained shift in working patterns. What does this mean? This generally means that when you shift the working pattern, like work from home, back to office, putting them back to work from a remote workforce, you giving them uh, tablets, mobile phones, corporate uh, devices, or their own personal device. When you constantly shift your working pattern, you tend to have more cyber attacks and data fraud. That what it suggests, 50% 50 of them are because of the shift in work pattern. Of course, there are other uh, details why the, the, they have security risks, but this one, uh, the, the data fraud and the cyber attacks that's happening because of the working patterns is really, really concerning at the world economy. So they say there are four phases for this COVID-19 situations as we are in the first phase, begin with infection, then going into a social distancing. Then we are at phase three, where we are managing the whole situation and phase four would be eradication. What does it mean for the IT? So as an IT administrator, we are at the phase three, even though we are managing all the COVID situation globally, we are looking to have endpoints uh, more uh, same or less during the pandemic and uh, we are going to look at endpoints going into uh, into outside of your office more and then they will be back so there will be a pre-pandemic pandemic situation and post-pandemic so Gartner initially predicted uh, before the whole pandemic situation they predicted by 2030 there will be a 30 percent movement into remote work but however during the pandemic uh, situation, there has been moved into 50% of remote work. So uh, Gartner is predicting that after the pandemic, they're going to be close to 50% for will shift into remote work. They, they predicted 30% to move by 2030, but it all got accelerated due to the whole COVID-19 situation. And we're looking at 50% of remote workforce by post pandemic. And if you would like to have get more details about, uh, if you'd like to know more details about that, you can go to the link that's shown on the bottom of the screen. It's going to give you those details uh, by, the, by the gardener. Now, what were the challenges that we faced during this work from home infrastructure readiness. So I'm going to sum it up what we, so what was the problem during the whole work from home or remote work challenges, or even when you are back to office while we are actually considering coming back to the office, having uh, the devices in office and in remote workforce. We had trouble of enabling them work from home. We had issues with internet bandwidth, enabling them connectivity could be VPN connectivity or getting your applications moved to edge 
so that they get access or moving towards a proper cloud solution. That's number one, enabling work from home and then managing these devices. Bring your own device. And there is an interesting terminology that says bring your own internet, which means we rely on the user's internet for the business needs. So that's bring your own device and your own internet type of uh, type of devices. Now we have to have proper collaboration tools. That was a problem. And then we moved into another problem, how to secure these devices. We have to lock these devices down, patch them, patch these machines, whether they're in, in office, outside office, we need to have a concrete patching solution. Data leak prevention is also was also a problem. Make sure the business data does not go out or get leaked. And then browser security, as Chris was talking about, while we are moving completely or probably partially cloud-based or browser-based applications, it is important to have browser security and then you need to have encryptions as well. So quick question to all of you, are you all game for back to office battle? Now, if I have to get back to back to office, I have to follow a certain compliance or probably certain security controls in order to achieve complete security. I'm just taking CIS. It could be different for each organization. So CIS, let's look at the top six of what CIA security control says. It says inventory of authorized and unauthorized devices. That's the first one. You need to have what author details or the inventory of all the devices that you have. Then comes authorized and unauthorized software or the applications you need to have in other terms a comprehensive application management and then moving on you need to have a secure configuration for your hardwares and applications that you have on your network moving on you need to have a comprehensive vulnerability assessment and remediation tool you need to have a tool which gives you a continuous assessment and helps you remediate those vulnerabilities. That's one of the very important part of security control. Then controlled use of administrative privileges, how to reduce or strip down the administrative privileges for the user, make sure they have a lean administrative privileges, make sure none of the users get exploited. So these are top five or six um, CIS security controls that is recommended for an effective cyber defense. Let's get, let's get aligned that to the real time. We at Manage Engine are looking at endpoints lockdown. So taking all those five principles in place, if I have an endpoint, how do I secure it? Conceptually, you go into the first, we talked about having inventory of devices. When you have Manage Engine Desktop Central deployed, you will have the details about every device that's there on the network. And it does work in conjunction with other Manage Engine tools like Asset Explorers as well. And the second thing is inventory of application, allowed application. That's the first one. You need to have a control about what application should be installed and what should not be installed. Those things need to be completely uh, audited. So allowed applications, patch management, a comprehensive patch management where you can patch all your operating system patches as well as third party applications as well. Encryption, encrypt your device. Make sure you have proper encryptions so that you, you, when the data is secure, when it's at rest, when it's at movement, proper firewall and antivirus is required for complete security of the endpoint. Browser security, as we mentioned, is a key feature now. Conditional exchange for your devices, network access control. It is really important when you're back to office, you need to have a network access control so that if the device is not clients, which means it has to be quarantined. Same goes with your COVID-19 situations. If you go out, if you go out to different states, that of, of course, that's how it is followed in India, probably uh, worldwide, it could be different. When you move between different states, different, different uh, locations, you need to quarantine yourself until you get healthy. Same thing with the devices, when, you're, when they are back to office, when they are at home, when they are back to office, you need to make sure they are properly patched they have appropriate versions of the applications. If not, you quarantine them, NAC control. Then goes into data leak prevention. You need to have a proper solution for that. 
EPAM, Endpoint Privileged Access Management. We'll talk more about it. It is, it's been in the market for a while, but we're going to talk more about that as well. So we at Managed in Think, this conceptual approach, which will provide a comprehensive endpoint security towards insider as well as outsider threats. Looking at our solution, endpoint management and security, we have different product portfolios for each of the functionalities, but Desktop Central would be a unified endpoint solution. It has all these features together in one solution. It has one UI that you can op operate and use all these functionalities, topping up from patch management, which is Patch Manager Plus, mobile device management that has your modern capabilities. It can manage your modern devices, as well as your legacy devices. So you have modern management, mobile device enterprise management, and then you have browser security. You have vulnerability manager that addresses your vulnerabilities at system level, at application level. Then on the far left down, you go with device control plus, you can audit your ports and uh, you especially USB ports, what should be connected, what should not be connected. And you can have a comprehensive control over it, meaning what files to be copied, what not to be copied, things like that. We'll talk about that. Moving up the OS deployer imaging solution that can help you image different hardwares. One golden image, you can do imaging for multiple hardware independent deployment that's what it's all about so that's there and moving up far up remote access plus comprehensive remote management tool we'll talk about that too and desktop central on the top which has all these features inside of it which is the unified endpoint management tool we're going to talk about that let me take you to the product probably and then we'll come back to the different feature sets that we have so this is the desktop central console that uh, we, I was talking about uh, for people who have already associated with Manage Engine or desktop central would be familiar. Even for them, some of the tabs might be new. Those are the new features that we are going to talk today. So this is desktop central at unified endpoint management with security add-on, especially focusing on endpoint security. We have a lot of add-ons that's been added into desktop central. We'll be looking at those things as well. You have vulnerability management assessment, complete application management, OS imaging, then image deployment, mobile device management, data leak prevention by device control, application control talks about the blacklisting and whitelisting of applications, browser security, bit locker management, and tools as well. So this is the uh, view of desktop central one application where you can control all your uh, endpoint security. And, and Desktop Central has been awarded two times for the Magic Quadrant for the uh, Unified Endpoint Management Tools and we've been recognized uh, on the Cartner's Pure Insight Customer Choice Awards as well. You can look into the link that's shown on the bottom of the screen for more details. First one in the security line, let's go into the product responding to known vulnerabilities. How do I do it? Let's get into the product. So with desktop central, the first one, threats and patches, that's the third tab. It has complete vulnerability management, meaning it gives you a report of the vulnerabilities at the endpoint. If you have a patch ready, then you go ahead and patch it. If you don't have a patch, then it tells you how to remediate it. So it has both vulnerability assessment and patching solution. Let's look at this. The dashboard talks about, for example, 162 total vulnerabilities. When I go inside of that, it tells me what are those vulnerabilities. It's It has categorized itself into application vulnerabilities, system, different system misconfigurations, and web server configurations. So looking at the first one, so in this place, you can see the different vulnerability that's been detected and if a patch is available or not. And for some of them, there is no patch. So with regular patch management, you only take care of the vulnerabilities that has patch available. When you have vulnerability uh, management add-on into your patch management like this one, it will be able to detect the applications which require patches 
and the ones that does not have patch but still are vulnerable so you'll get that report so if it has a patch available there you can directly go ahead and deploy those patches if it does not have a patch then it tells you how to remediate it you click on that link and it tells you the manual resolution and the vendor what does the vendor say about it where, what are the references about these vulnerabilities you can know more about it then you can decide whether you want to remediate it or you want to completely take away the application itself so and of course it shows you the cvs scores for those vulnerabilities as well and uh, that's number one and the exploit status whether this specific vulnerability is exploited anywhere around the globe it will have those details as well in the list of vulnerability we go down the second type is the system misconfigurations right at the not just because of the application itself the first one talked about the vulnerability because of the application however uh, there could be other vulnerabilities at your endpoint uh, that could be due to the endpoint itself right so those vulnerabilities will be at uh, will be shown here under different categories antivirus protection user account management because of firewall password for policies uh, legacy usage of legacy protocols how did we arrive at these categories well these categories are based on cas standards benchmarks and stig standards and benchmark stig so we compare these two standards and that's how we arrive at these categories now it does not or it may not have all the categories but it has the critical ones that are available for both these uh, um, compliances if you'd like to know more please get in touch with us if you would like to know more about this tool how it does what's the database for it get in touch with us we should be able to give you idea if you're seriously looking for a vulnerability management solution then high-risk software that talks about whether an end-of-life application is used or peer-to-peer -peer protocol is used, how many applications are using remote desktop sharing. If you're running web servers on your environment, it's going to audit those web servers and give you the vulnerabilities that are present at your web servers. So that's also available with vulnerability management. The last one is not a vulnerability, but it's more of an audit what ports are used on your endpoints what are the services that are using it if you feel some any malicious activities going on on a specific port from this audit you can take action against it you can see which are the instances that are using these ports and what are the services that are being using it so that's port audit application vulnerabilities and remediation you have system misconfigurations and of course even in system misconfigurations we do have remediation available not for all but for the ones that we can fix it right from here for example ELS version 1.1 is enabled if I want to disable it all I have to do is deploy a simple configuration and it should be done so that's system misconfigurations moving on web server misconfigurations would also be audited last one would be port audit so this is vulnerability assessment how about remediation the patching process well the patching process the, the desktop central has a very comprehensive patch management feature let me give you overall overview of how what all it does so that you can see if it matches your requirements the first thing about desktop central patch management is it does support cross-platform it, it 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 patches windows mac and linux operating systems it takes care of operating system patches and third party updates as well if you're looking to manage specifically security updates or feature packs non security updates if you want to filter them out yes you can do so it takes care of all these categories third party updates operating system patches driver updates and bios for windows environment so how how does this whole patching process works people who are using manage engine will understand but for the entire audience so whenever a patch is released by the vendor say for microsoft patch tuesday whenever they release patches manage engine is going to test those patches on the manage engine test environment and then it's going to the database for these patches will be uploaded onto our servers for our customers now once the patch is released how much time does it take it takes a maximum of 24 hours but we have tapped less than 15 hours but it's safe to say maximum of 24 hours all your patches will be available on the database 
then your server on-prem server gets connected to our database every day gets the latest vulnerability database and does a scan on all your endpoints now this is on-prem and we do have a on-demand version of our cloud version of desktop central as well i'll talk about that later on but i'm talking about the on-prem at the moment so it's going to run a scan on all your endpoints and it's going to give you the details about how many patches are missing how many patches are applicable and how many are installed those details will be updated here you can then decide uh, how what type of reports you want so on the applicable patches you can add different filters you can take for reports based on severity based on cv ids or based on the operating system say for example let's 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 call for example my security team wants uh, a report uh, critical patches missing on my servers every week i need a report so can i take that on the ui yes so i go here and say severity equals critical and then operating system equals windows server so go here take that report now it's going to give me all the critical patches that are missing on my server operating systems it's not necessary that you have to go for operating system but you can go with different platforms computer names branch offices you can create your own groups and uh, domains as well so you can have different filters take a report something like that can i automate this can i automate this this is at the ui level so is it a possibility to automate and send an email that's also available reporting reporting and remediation so first thing reporting i go to reports predefined reports or uh, we are going to schedule a report so go to reports from the tab schedule reports add a schedule report so i say critical and i scroll down patch reports and I say applicable patches. You see a small filter sign there, add that filter. And I have created a filter already, so it's showing me there, but even otherwise, you can still create a filter, add new, severity equals critical, operating system is Windows Server. You can apply that. So now from the applicable patches, it will filter out the critical patches for your servers. You can give your email ID here. How often do you want? every week when you are Monday morning, if your security team wants that report, you can schedule it for 6 a.m. or when, whichever time you want. And that's it, the report will be sent out to you. So that's the first thing, reporting of the patches, missing patches, applicable patches, and installed patches. Second step is to deploy those patches to my endpoints. When it comes to deployment, we have two methods. One, you simply choose your patch and push them out to your endpoints or you can test it on a test environment and then push them out to your endpoints as well. Both the ways are available. First one, manual patching, we call it as. I can install as well as uninstall a patch, which means rollback. If you're expecting a rollback feature, yes, it's available, but provided the vendor has to support the rollback feature. The second one is to go about the test and approve. Right. You can select a patch. Let's let's go for a patch. Select a patch, click on install. Should you should be able to deploy those patches through manual deployment process. The second step that you have is the test and approve. Say, for example, you want to create a test group. So I can group the different machines together and form a test group. Select the updates that I want from the list. Or if you want to create separate groups, yes, we can. So you can group different machines together. Say for example, if you want to form a patch test group, you can create custom groups and then you can target those groups for test and approve. Let's go ahead and do that.
once you select what type of uh, patches you want to select there we go security patches third party updates and then whether you want to do antivirus definition updates or not so this these are applicable antiviruses that you can utilize to do a definition update those are the supported ones to be very frank uh, we are trying to add more antivirus to the list driver updates if you'd like to then comes deployment policy so you have flexible deployment whether you want to automate it or you want to deploy it manually you have flexible deployment policies which day of the week which week of the month what is the time window between which you want to patch it whether you want to do it on a regular calendar or based on past tuesday you could schedule all those from here by default it's going to be a silent installation but if you'd like to notify the user you can go ahead and notify them allow them to interact with the patch deployment process reboot will be always a concern so if you'd like to reboot the machines in a different time yes i can go ahead and install the patches but the reboot should happen only during a weekend if you'd like to schedule like that yes it's possible or if you say give the option to the end user whenever they want to reboot let's give the option to the end user if you'd like to schedule it like that that's also possible if you say do not reboot it just install the patch and report it to me that's also available so you have a comprehensive or granular control over how you want to deploy your patches right from rebooting shutdown or uh, from the time the time window in which you want to deploy it so once you choose your policy you can give your email address so that once the that deployment is complete uh, it will send you a detailed email about how many got installed how many got failed those details will be emailed to you so once these patches are tested then it goes into automatic patch deployment task so you can create a task for a production floor whatever patches that are approved either through the system or you manually approve them can be deployed to your production floor same way select a policy you can create n number of policies n number of groups all can run on the, their own schedules first week second week third week different deployment timings different reboot policies and different test approval mechanisms for each of them each of the operating systems all can report back to you you will have a complete control over the patch management process so this is patch management from desktop central or from manage engine side detection of vulnerability and if it has a patch you go ahead and do the patch management if it does not have a patch you see for remediation so that's why i, I on my slide that said automatic remediation process or a manual remediation process both are available and in fact in fact uh, this what i showed you on the screen was a suite it has all the vulnerability management and patch management together if you'd like to have it as a separate product that's available as well vulnerability manager plus but then desktop central is a suite that has everything together a couple of screenshots from the same which we did patch management at a, gla at a glance out of box feature no wsus required so if you're wondering how the patches are downloaded the server downloads all the patches for an on-prem on a cloud version the, the download is all taken care of by the server itself so it downloads the patches from the vendor website directly and then distributes to the endpoints so you don't require any wsus server and workstation patching is also available cross-platform support windows mac and linux operating system supports both operating system and third party updates then test and approve automation is also there you test the patches on a group approve it for the entire group automate your whole patch management solution like a, how i showed you automated create schedule say for example every month third week wednesday starting 5 pm till midnight i want to deploy patches yes every month it's going to automate and run those patches you can decline the patches that you don't want you have filters and reports available for you that's patch management going the next one into this uh, endpoint lockdown the first one was the patch management second one would be allowed application or comprehensive application management so i'm going to talk about that the second one which is very very uh, required for application management to restrict the business so when i say application management it not only talks about restricting the application but also the deploy the software administrative install of those applications so a lot of the challenges comes in when the user 
require, I mean, when the user wants an application, they need an administrative privilege to get it installed or to make changes. So you can strip down those factors by using uh, our product. The first one is application deployment, right? So for all common applications, we have templates ready. The, the problem that arises in creating packages is uh, silent switches. If you're using our templates, you don't have to worry about silent switches. Say for example, if I want Chrome, I can simply go, go here, search for Chrome and click on that and click on create package. It's going to download the package from the vendor website and create the package and get it ready. Apply the silent switches, your package is ready for deployment. And even you have another option says update automatically. Meaning if the new, if there is a new version that's released, what do you want to do? Whether you want to upgrade the package or you, do, you just want to stay with the version that you're on, you can choose that. Create package, it's going to download the package and it will be ready for deployment purpose. How about applications that's not part of the list? Well, we have over close to 4,000 applications in this list or 8,000, um, but if you'd like to create a package of your own for all commercial application, yes, you can do this too. So I go here to the packages, Windows package. Say for example, Office 365. It could be an EXE or an MSI. You don't have to convert it to MSI exec. If it's an MSI, no need of a silent switch. You can directly deploy it, or it could be EXE as well. Commercial, non-commercial application, select that. You can either deploy it from a shared folder directly, or you can just download the application to the endpoint and then install it from there. Both the options are available. Either install it right from share or download it to the endpoint. Upload your package here, provide your silent switches and your deployment package is complete. However, if you'd like to do pre or post deployment activities, something like if you'd like to check for a specific software, uninstall the software and then proceed with installation process, you have that option. Or if you'd like to make changes to your registry, yes, you have those options. So before deployment of the application or post deployment, if you'd like to run a script or make changes to your environment, restart services, all those options are possible. So pre and post deployment activities can be configured. Once the package is created, then you go ahead and deploy it to your endpoints. Similar way how you deployed a patch, you select your package and then you push it out to your endpoints. And the best part is you do not require any administrative, you know, you don't require any uh, administrative rights for the users to get this software deployed. You can select the application and go for the deployment process same way as how you deploy a patch. The other interesting option is the self-service portal where the user can launch a self-service portal from their endpoint and you can populate the list of applications that are, that are approved. You can populate it here. They can install it right from there whenever they want. They do not require any administrative privilege for this as well. So application deployment either from predefined templates like ours, or you can create your own package. Next step is application control. We have it as a security feature. Now here, I can go ahead and first create a whitelist or blacklist. So let's say I want to create a whitelist. I can either go with the vendor name, product name, hash value, folder path, or verified executable. So I choose based on vendor and say, hey, these are the whitelisted applications. Once you create those whitelisting, then you go ahead and apply this policy to a group. So I go here, select a group, choose the whitelisting. Now you have two modes. Either you can say audit mode or a strict mode. If you go into audit mode, except the whitelist application, if there are any other application running on the background, I will allow them to run those application. That's audit mode. I'll only report it to you saying, hey, you have a whitelist of application. And apart from this whitelist, you have, there are other applications that's running and you might want to take a look at it. You can then decide whether you want to whitelist it or blacklist it. 
but then there is a strict mode as well where it will ground every other applications apart from the one that you have whitelisted so if you have whitelisted 10 applications apart from this if they try to run anything else it's going to ground all those applications that's strict mode so apart from this i also spoke about the endpoint privilege access right so there was a new terminology that that uh, or we've been quite wild endpoint privileged access management ebam so in view of that though it has a variety of application in view of that we have something called application privilege list what is this all about now i can go ahead and select the application that requires elevated privilege now usually we give privilege to the users to run certain application if you have this you don't have to give the user permissions rather choose those applications that requires elevated privilege and privileges the managed engine agent that sits there on the endpoint will elevate those privilege for those applications for the users so even if the user does not have an admin rights still when they double click and run those applications we will elevate the privilege for those applications by this you can reduce the use of administrative rights for your users you can strip them down that's one of the cas control so by this you can reduce that and you don't will not have any malware or ransomware issues that arises because of user clicking or user installing another product things like that you can minimize all those by reducing the administrative privilege for the users and having this in place where this will elevate the application uh, privilege so that's just that's application control deploy your application create a policy blacklist and whitelist of applications and you also have privileged access list for the application this is application control remember the thumbs as an add security add-on into your desktop central if you want the whole suite you need desktop central uem plus the security add-on please do chat with us i do have extra expert panel with us and also chris is also there with us so if you would like to get your questions answered we are here on the chat uh, if you want to know how to evolve with the product or probably look into more options please kindly chat with us so that's application control in the list of security so we saw about patch management and application management let's move on just summarizing what i spoke administrative install and uninstall of applications you have self service portal to install the application blacklisting gray listing and white listing of application create a policy and privileged management auditing and reporting so that's was all about software deployment and application control in fact auditing and reporting is taken care by the asset management portion of desktop central which is the inventory you can take a comprehensive report about what applications are installed and we'll talk about more about this on the upcoming slides so it gives you details about the missions the operating system the software that are installed the certificate that are installed all those details will be available with the inventory portion of it Just a screenshot the third one is the browser security how to secure your browsers from browser browsing attacks so you have one more layer of security that's been added to desktop central it's called the browser security plus and it's available again as a standalone as well as add-on into desktop central it takes it it supports multiple browsers chrome firefox internet explorer and edge all these browsers are supported why do I need a browser security? Rather than looking into the slide, let's go into the product and see what it does. So on the desktop central suite, you have something called browsers. So a comprehensive browser management. So in this browser security, just like how we did for the application control, you can create policies and then associate them with the group of machines that you have so to look at the browser security i have taken a couple of cis benchmarks that can be achieved using browser security so if you go to cis benchmarks and search for benchmarks for internet explorer 
uh, for Chrome or for Firefox, different browsers that you have, you will have layer one security, level two security, level three security uh, benchmarks that should be there, that's, that's, uh, that's required for any organization. So if you look at those, some of them are very critical changes that should be there on your environment. So I'll just take um, a couple of them to show you how you can do this in the products. So the first one is enabling or disabling add-ons. Add-ons are always a problem. So you need to make sure you whitelist them or you restrict the users from adding those add-ons into your browsers. Let's look at browser security. Moving, moving into browsers, the first thing is add-on management. You can go ahead and add those add-ons, add plugins, however you want to call it, based on the browsers. Chrome, Internet Explorer, Firefox, Edge, you can go ahead and add those browser extensions to this list, right? You can either add and say, allow the users to install these extensions. Or you can go ahead and say, don't allow the users at all. And then you just say, these are the whitelisted extensions. You can install these, but you cannot install any other extensions. And what about the user already installed extensions, whether you want to disable or you want to keep it, you can go ahead and configure those. Comprehensive add-on management for Chrome, Internet Explorer, Firefox, and Edge as well. So that's one of the compliance. Let's look at the next one. Java permissions. Now, managing Java is very important because most of the attacks, CAS at least feels that the attacks on the machines are using Java. So it's important to manage Java permissions. Let's go back to the product to see how that works. And we have an exclusive Java permission management. Right, you have Java manager. You can go ahead and say, so there are two things here. Either you can completely disable Java usage for the websites, or you can see this group of websites should use a specific version of Java. And I can go ahead and say either by sites or based on website groups. So if you have created groups like social networking, corporate, corporate applications, you can create all those. So for example, I'm going to say manage engine.com. I'm going to add it and say, if you're using the site, I love Java, but then it should be version six and about anything about a specific update. So you can select those things, or I can completely say if they run, for example, Facebook, if they're using Facebook, disable, <laughs> disable the Java. So they can't run any applications, play games on Facebook from here, right? So you can block Java. And in fact, in fact, uh, I'll show you one more interesting thing that's called web filter while we talked about the, uh, um facebook so if you would like to have url filter based on timing so you want to say when they're in office i don't want them to use facebook when they're away from office we don't really care so you can add your urls or a group of websites that you say block them during a scheduled time so that when they try to run those uh, websites it will be blocked during the office hours and it will be allowed post that so web filter is also available. Of course, you can add more restrictions saying block malicious websites, SSL protection, certificate protection, third blocking third party websites that injects codes. These things can be uh, you know, configured as well. Right. This is just, uh, the, those are a couple of things. And when it comes to the browser security, going to have this there are a lot of other options things like threat prevention if you would like to have threat prevention enabled things like validation of certificates uh, blocking websites with excessive ad phishing filters flash restriction all those things are available and then you go to data leak prevention right data leak prevention includes saving browser history capturing screenshot remembering passwords Background processing. This is one of the critical ones that is that usually uh, people want to disable. Chrome or the Chromium-based browsers has a tendency to launch a process and keep the process running even after the browser is closed, which means if there is a malicious attack that's going to launch, even if they close the browser, still the EXE is going to run on the background. That's very, very 
critical. So you have to say background processing. No, you cannot allow background processing. And this is in fact a critical compliance for CIS. You have to disable background processing on your browsers. And if you are wondering what are the other CIS or other uh, compliance in place, we have a compliance tab that talks about it. You can go into the CIS compliance. That's by default, it's there. You click on that. It's going to talk about how many missions are in compliant or how, how many are non-compliant. You can click into those and see what are the non-compliant areas. You can go ahead and either fix it or you can leave it like, just like that if you would like to. So that's uh, compliance. And if you'd like to build your own compliance policy, that's also available. Based on what is needed, based on the benchmarks that you set for your browsers, you can create compliance policies as well. And not just that, if you're looking to see more insights about how many harmful plugins are there, how many malicious plugins are there, if you'd like to know those details, that's available. In fact, I can go one step further, see web activities as well. What are the different websites they have visited? If they have downloaded something, how many times they have visited? When was the last time they visited? Web activity can also be monitored using browser security plus. It does have a lot of other um, options when it comes to the policies, things like browser routing, routing to the right browsers, browser lockdown. It behaves like a kiosk. You can, they can access only uh, the browsers that are uh, you know configured apart from these browsers I mean sorry apart from the websites that's been configured they can't access any other websites that's a browser lockdown similar to that of a kiosk mode web isolation data in persistent sessions all those policies are in place you can take a trial of the product to know more about these browser security Next one would be a data leak prevention uh, or a simple DLP solution for your USB device ma management. Let's, it's going to monitor and manage the devices that are connected to your system, restrict the data transfer between these devices and your machines, role-based access for controlling these devices, auditing and reporting. Let's, let's go to the product. That's under device control tab. So you go to device control, you could create policies. Again, just like every other add-on, create a policy associated to a group. That's how simple it is. So you go to policy, create policy here, allow or block. If you choose to allow, you can say what type of file should be allowed, how much minimum maximum space is allowed, file size is allowed. And if you'd like to shadow, meaning if you want to take a copy of file that's been copied into the disk drives, Yes, it can take a copy and share it on a share where you can audit it later on. Or if you would like to, you know, just know file tracing is also available. File tracing and file shadowing, both of them are available. And if you'd like to block the devices completely, yes, you can. And if you have a list of allowed, allowed or trusted devices, right, by the IT, if you have trusted devices by the IT, you can go ahead and configure, add those trusted devices so that only those trusted devices will be allowed. Then comes temporary access, right? If you'd like to create, let, let me go ahead and edit the one that's already there. You can create temporary access for users, for computers as well. You can set an expiry date and generate a code. There are two ways. Either you can just generate a code and give it to the user for a temporary access, or you can sp specifically deploy this configuration during the window, they will have access to USBs. So there are two ways of doing it. You can choose the one that is feasible for you. Temporary access, then comes file tracing and file shadowing. So like I said, if you'd like to shadow a file, you can, or if you like to trace a file, let me show you a server that has data to it. So you can, uh, you can do a file tracing. Let's see how it looks like on the real time on the server, how file tracing is there. So, so that uh, uh, you, then, Without your knowledge or without the administrative knowledge, there will not be any file copied onto the devices. Let's say 
reports, file shadowing. So here you go, talks about what file was copied, when was it and whether it was uh, shadowed or not, then comes file tracing. It only gives you a report. If you feel privacy is a problem, enable file tracing alone. It tells you what file were copied. Even if they rename a file, it will still get that details for you. So that's device control plus. So we have application control, browser security, device control DLP solution. Then we looked at the vulnerability management. One more in this line of security add-on is the BitLocker management, right? So this one does, is not a separate add-on. It comes along with security add-on. So if you're going for a complete suite of security add-on, you get BitLocker management. So what, what, what can you do with BitLocker management? So you can enable BitLocker, disable BitLocker, create policies specific for OS drives or for the use space or the restart processes. If you want to update these keys to your domain controllers, AD, yes, you can. If you want to rotate the bit lockers, right, for every 30 days and take the recovery keys and update it to your domain controller, which is a good security practice, you can do those things here as well. Just like every other security add-on, create a policy and then you associate it to a computer. And it also gives you the reports about BitLocker, how many missions are encrypted, how many are not. In fact, you can take the recovery keys details as well. A comprehensive report that tells you the drive status, recovery keys, and the identifiers as well. So one of the things that as an IT admin comes to you is finding out the identity, I mean the key for a specific identifier when you need it. So whenever a user asks you, hey, I need uh, the key for my BitLocker and here is my identification key. You can go here and retrieve it. Put your identifier, it will tell you what's the recovery key. You can just give it or chat with the end user or you can put it yourself and resolve it. So that's also available. This is BitLocker management from Desktop Central or from Manage Engine. Again, if you have questions, please feel free to chat with us. I do have our team and Chris team answering your queries real time. Data leak prevention. And again, like I said, it's available as uh, add-on into Desktop Central and also as a separate core product called Device Control Plus. Next one that comes to us is the network access control. Let's go back to the same Endpoints lockdown. So application control, patch management, encryption, browser security, and network access control. NAC, I have to quarantine my machines when they do not have a specific policy. Do I have an option with desktop central for that? Yes. We have introduced a small tool that can help you out in this. Though it's not a complete UI, but we understand this is very, very critical. So we have introduced network access control. How does this work? First, let me how, tell you how this, this works. What you have to do is define policies. What version of the application should be there? What are the services that should be there? Those things, you can define the policies. Then we have a small tool that will take care of it. The agent will then quarantine the machine if those policies are not met. If it is met, then it will allow the network communication. And uh, if you if you if you want to know and download the tool, uh, you can see the link that's shared on the bottom of the screen. I'm going to keep a couple of uh, seconds here for people to take that down, or even after this, we should be able to give this link to you. Go to the link that's shown. Uh, it will give you step-by-step -step instructions of how to use this tool. This is the quarantine policy generator. Let, let's go to the product probably to show you how it works. So when once you download the product, or probably if you extract it, these are the files that you would see. So you can simply run the quarantine policy generator and you can add, say for example, I want to have this application, let's say manage engine is the application name. And then you say, 
What is it type? Is it a software or a service? I say software. What is the status that I should check? It should be running, non-exist, or exist. So if you say exist, if the application exists, I will uh, quarantine. If you say non-exist, if it does not there, if it's not there, I will quarantine. And you can add custom checks as well. You can add custom tags, check type, what is it? Whether it's a registry value, if you want to check for a registry value first and then quarantine, these are the conditional passes. After that, you create a policy, generate a new policy. It will create a policy here and you can store it. And then once you create this policy, it's just a matter of going back to the desktop central and creating uh, going back to the desktop central and creating a configuration. That's called a quarantine policy configuration. I'm going to just modify and show it to you. It has a custom script. Again, like I mentioned, if you go to the, if you go to this link, it will give you more details about how to use this network access control. And whatever I have spoken is the step-by-step -step instructions. Run the tool, create the policy, and then deploy the policy right from custom script. That's all you need to do. You just have to go back and create the custom script, deploy to the endpoints. So what this will do is match the JSON file that was created. If, uh, if the policy is met, I will allow it. If the policy is not met, I will quarantine it. So that's NAC control. And what happens after that? Well, can I un uh, unblock those policies? Yes, you have instructions for it. Uh, you, you, there has another file that you can deploy to the machine to you know, release them from the quarantine. Or once the policy is met, it will automatically release them from the quarantine. This is quarantine uh, network access control from Manage Engine. Though it has a small, I mean, though it, it is not available on the UA at the moment, but this is a tool that's integrated with Desktop Central soon, or probably in future, we will have these also in, in the UI as well. So that's network access control. So which is very, very important uh, in terms of uh, back to office situation. So when they're back to office, if you'd like to see a version control for applications, right? It's very, very important that you have an NAC solution. Of course, uh, many of our customers have NAC in place at the perimeter level, that's good. But at the endpoint level, to have a NAC with the policies in place is great as well. So this is the unified management, unified endpoint management and security uh, portfolios. Whatever I, I have gone through, uh, you know, it has the endpoint, endpoint management perspective. It has the uh, you know client management, modern management perspective. Uh, it has the endpoint security, application control, vulnerability management, browser security, patching process, device control, and system health policies. Then you also have analytics and health, uh, you know, reporting and auditing of those as well. So this is the holistic view of how what Desktop Central is, conceptual view of how Desktop Central is designed and what are the different things that you can do with our product. So the next thing that uh, we are going to see is the modern management capabilities that you, you have uh, with the desktop central. So one example is what I'm going to take and then show you different things. Windows 10, which can behave both like a modern device as well as like a legacy device. So Windows Autopilot enrollment. How does it work? You integrate your Azure AD with the MDM server, and then you add the business to your business store portal for Windows, Microsoft, and then distribute the uh, and then distribute and activate devices. The moment they get started, inclusive of your laptops, you can autopilot it. What are the prerequisites that's required? You need a third-party certificate to be added to your mobile device management. You need an administrator account for Azure, and you need to have adequate user licenses in Azure to do that. Step one is uh, provisioning the certificate. Once you provision the certificate, then uh, let me see why the image is not getting loaded. Uh, 
All right, so once you have the license, you, you see on the screen that says Active, Azure Active Directory, go there, click on the licenses, and then you will be able to see or purchase license from there. The next step is to click on manage and go to all products. And whether you want to add licenses or try out or buy, you can buy it from there. Then it could be a premium license, could be free, free trial, activate it. It's a step-by-step -step instruction that tells you assign it to a user group. Take pick a license, pick a user group and select the user from the administrator and then assign it. So once you associate the license, the first step, first step is to associate the license. The second step is to integrate an MDM program. So you go to Azure Active Directory and click on mobility management and then you add an application. So once you integrate this, autopiloting would be available, right? Once the missions are onboarded, let me take you and show you what are the different things that you can control. So with Windows 10, uh, you can manage it both like a legacy as well as modern side. Let me talk about modern side. You can do geo tracking. You can track the device on the map and say uh, geo tracking and fencing is there. And you can also do corporate and complete wipe, just like how you do it for a mobile device. You can do corporate and complete wipe uh, from here as well. Not only that, when it comes to modern management, let's say if I want to distribute a profile for Windows, things like passcode restrictions, Wi-Fi profile. So Windows laptop, if you want to make them connect to just one specific Wi-Fi alone, if you'd like to put it like that, yes, that's possible. You can add the Wi-Fi SSID and the password set it up. They can only connect to this specific Wi-Fi. Or if you'd like to go for a preferred approach, that's also there. Setting up VPN, putting the Windows 10 on kiosk or multi-app kiosk, configuring email, exchange active sync, distribute certificates or custom configurations. So these are available for Windows profile. And in fact, uh, I, from mobile device management, I showed you from the modern management standpoint, but then you could manage other devices as well. iOS, Android, Windows, Chromebooks, Mac OS and Apple TV. are possible you can distribute them from here so that's modern management and in fact um, from this line uh, of security ma management and security there are two different uh, you, portfolios or functionalities that exist within desktop central. One is a complete security side. The other one is a management. If you can uh, if you can create a better policy or if you can define policies for your environment, then uh, you, th this tool can give you a comprehensive endpoint security and also help you manage those endpoints. It has both management and endpoint security capabilities. Now let's see what are the different integrations that you have for Desktop Central. So I'm going to quickly run through uh, the different integrations that you have. Integrations at UI level, you have integrations at data level that we post and integrations at process levels too. So what are the integrated features that you get while you integrate different products? So you can integrate asset data, install or uninstall software, remote control, software templates, run different scripts, access help desk request from the track and, and generate tickets from there. So these are the different uh, features that can be integrated. Different applications, uh, that in-house applications that can be integrated. I think uh, Chris uh, went through uh, detail about the different applications. So in-house applications, Service Desk Plus on-prem cloud, Service Desk Plus MSP, Asset Explorer, and Analytics Plus. These are the different uh, integrations that's available. 
let's look at some of the screenshots or probably features that you get. First one, integration with Analytics Plus. You get a comprehensive dashboard about how many patches were installed, how many were deployed, patch management and all other data can be imported into Analytics Plus. Third party integrations. You can integrate it with Spiceworks, ServiceNow, Jira, Zendesk, and Fresh Service. So if you integrate Spiceworks, you can deploy, I mean, you can take remote control of those assets right from the, Spice, uh, from the Spiceworks console. You can shut down the machine, restart hibernation on the bottom right corner, as you can see, you will have just like a plugin into your uh, Spiceworks uh, environment. ServiceNow is similar. ServiceNow has like an add-on and it says this uh, desktop central. Uh, once you start typing the computer name, you can select the computer, select the software that you want to deploy and you can just deploy it right from here. In fact, not just software deployment as you see on the screenshot, it also has inventory details following on the left side tab. If you look inventory asset details of those machines, patch details of those machines can also be seen from here. Zendesk integration. So you can see you can take remote control of these machines right from here. Two integrations possible with uh, Zendesk remote control as well as deploying application. Jira, you have a iframe integration, meaning inside Jira, you can take desktop central from the Jira console. You don't have to navigate at all. Whatever you have in desktop central, you can take that into as an iframe integration so that all the, the uh, things in desktop central will be available inside your Jira uh, console. So you have iframe complete integration with Jira. Fresh service integration as well. With regards to fresh service, it is will be available as an add-on where you can deploy application, remote control, system manager functions are also there. So let's let's look at when I say remote control, that's feature, how does it work with Manage Engine? So you have a comprehensive tool, remote control. You can take remote control of any machine right from here. It does support multiple monitors. It does have screen recording. You can have multiple technician to same uh, view the same uh, window. You have those option as well. So if I want to do a, a controller plus delete, I can send it there. Right, just like that. And it does uh, it does have blackening of monitor. So if you want to blacken the monitor for the end user, I can do it. I can disable the input of those users. Uh, or uh, if you want to just do a view only mode, I can do it or just take a screenshot, that's possible as well. So this is remote control. The same remote control will be available when you integrate with our platforms as well. Finally, looking at the architecture behind desktop central, you can manage missions in your local network. You can man manage missions in different locations as well. So if you have different locations, if you'd like to manage, yes, that's possible. We have a concept called distribution server uh, where uh, distribution server, take, it's more like a distribution point takes your patches and then distributed to those locations. You also have secure gateway. This is to manage roaming users. If you have users that are going to be connected over the internet, you can utilize this secure gateway in order to connect to, to, that, to those devices. It does integrate with Active Directory, multiple does support multiple domains, work groups as well. So desktop central serve, this is an on-prem architecture. Is the product available on cloud? Will be the next question. Yes, desktop central is available on cloud as well. You can simply go to desktopcentral.manageengine.com, sign up for your desktop central version. You should be able to uh, see the product. However, there are differences in Desktop Central Cloud uh, being a recent uh, release. Uh, there are uh, differences between the cloud and the on-prem versions. Um, I'll probably try to put that up. Yes, before going to the differences, it's, it, does, it is available on Azure and AWS Marketplace as well. If you'd like to host it there, that's also available. So placing the differences in a table, right? 
when it comes to supported operating system, it uh, supports all the operating system, whatever is supported on on-prem, it's supported on cloud as well. When it comes to patch management, Linux patching alone is not available. Other patch management is available. Even it goes same for software deployment as well. Linux application deployment is not available yet, but it's just a matter of time. OS imaging is not available with uh, the cloud version yet it should be released by the q1 is what our eta is for the cloud version but on-prem has the imaging solution remote control is available on both asset management is available on both simple configurations like usb block power management scripts are available on both and uh, on infrastructure managing the in terms of the infrastructure or endpoints both are similar, you can manage similarly. I mean, there is no difference in the type of environment that you can manage, just the way how it is configured are different, but both are same in terms of features. Mobile device management is available on both and uh, the add-on secure gateway uh, is not required because it's cloud failover not required. And the security add-ons that we spoke about is yet to be released for the cloud. It's just a matter of time before we release it. Uh, it's available on on-prem. For more details, you can probably look into the link that's shown on the bottom of the screen. It gives you more insights about what's there on the stuff sent to on-prem and what's there or what's not there on the uh, cloud version. I'm going to leave the screen for a couple of seconds for people to take down. I think with that, I'm going to go into a QA session before I go. Just one thing that I saw on the internet. Due to coronavirus, all TCP applications are being converted to UDP to avoid handshakes. So what does that say to us is during this COVID situation, please stay safe. If you have symptoms, isolate yourself. Prevention is better than cure. Thank you very much for your time. Let's go into a Q&A session. So team, any questions, feel, feel free to reach out um, and, um, you know, we, we are always here to help. And as you guys can see on the screen, um, you know, if any, any questions or anything uh, about our endpoint management or security or the features that you guys uh, uh, seen so far uh, from Santosh, that's very insightful, Santosh, it's a good one. Um, so learned a lot. Uh, so reach out to us. We should be able to facilitate. We can book an online or an on-site demo or consulting session with us. And we are pretty much based on new market. Can come down to your office or our teams. We can uh, assist and enable the solution for you. And we have the experts available on demand from the vendor end. So uh, if needed, uh, you know, we have the engineer on call with us and we can get this rolled out for your organization and have our endpoint secure and uh, safeguard it. Sweet, and there's no questions asked and any specific questions that's been updated, we will answer it uh, accordingly. Uh, and I believe uh, the presentation will be shared uh, once the session is over. The presentation will be shared with everyone who's registered and who participated as well. And uh, we, you guys have the local contact and have, uh, you can reach out to Manage Engine. And for cloud signup links, uh, do reach out to us because we have a separate cloud onboarding process so that we can make sure that your uh, instance setup and portal setup, it's all done carefully. So that part, we will do a full onboarding assistance as well. Much appreciated and I believe we are right on time. Uh, thank you very much, Santosh. Thank you very much. Uh, all participants and hope the session was very useful and uh, feel free to reach out to us we are always here to help thank you all thank you very much thank you thank you very much chris thank you everyone you guys have a wonderful day bye bye